Morning, my friends. Let's have some fun. We've been waiting for this one for a good 10 years, a good 7 to 10 years it takes them. Sometimes it takes them longer to figure out the death of their own culture while they walk around singing the Lego song, everybody's happy, everybody's happy when you're part of the team. Uh, they all go around singing that as they believe that they live in a perfect world. And I wonder if anybody doesn't get that analogy that I use all the time. I, I think it's difficult for people to get, but then nothing could be like more in your face. Nothing could be more understandable. But I understand how everybody's it. So it makes it so um, when I talk about the perfect people that live in a perfect world, um, if you are sitting around going, I don't know what that means, it's because it's you. You can't figure it out because it's you. You probably laugh when I say all that about the perfect people, not realizing that since you can't figure it out, it literally means it's you. So um, let's have some fun. Um, yeah, this has been seven to ten years in the making. They've noticed. They've noticed that their own culture has died. So what are they going to do? They're, they're going to do everything that I've explained over the years. Now it's time for payoff time. But um, payoff time, it's always sad. It's always sad and dreary, full of the patheticness of human beings. As human beings, what are they going to do? They're going to pretend that they live in a perfect world full of perfect people. And we could never know what happened to our movies. We could never know. I mean, we're so perfect all the time. How could have this... It, it's so easy to understand how it happened. It's the internet. The internet is communism that gave everybody everything. You know that song? Video killed the radio star. Um, the internet that is communism. Nobody could argue that. The stupid people would. The stupid people don't know how anything exists, don't know how anything's real. They gaslight you if you say, it's pretty easy. The internet is communism. It gave everybody everything. You don't have to qualify to be, to be a movie star anymore. All you do is make a YouTube channel and you get millions of views and all the money that the movie stars used to make and the movie studios now just goes to little kids in their bedroom with YouTube channels. It's pretty easy to understand how it's social media and it's millennials. Millennials destroyed our world. You know the millennials that parody everything and never did anything original? They don't know how the world got destroyed. It's uh, all the wise people of the world told this all the wise they've already told this it's not something vague it's been warned of it's been predicted when you give everybody everything it creates communism and destroys your culture so how are they gonna pawn this off how are they gonna pretend like whoa hold on uh, our our movies they're gone but it it's it's postmodernism. Nobody could ever know how it happened in this perfect world full of perfect people we live in. So let's get the let's get the video going on. Oh, it's this guy that I made the last video on. This dude is is a as a special idiot who who clickbaits us, lies to us as he believes he's an ethical person. Just like all of them, they believe they're ethical people. Who then, if everybody is the ethical person that lives in a perfect world, the, the, these all these people live lives like somebody's going to rip them off. Everybody, all these people live paranoid lives, afraid of the other human beings while they have this weird competing shit in their head the left and the right side of their brain the the left side or the right side whatever it is wants to believe we live in a perfect world full of perfect people then the other side of their brain goes i'm on the lookout for everybody everybody's about to rip me off i'm on to you i'm on to you it's not it. My father would escort me to Blockbusters where I'd pick out a Will Ferrell film. I'd grab a bag of sweets, maybe a 7-Up. I was about to have a crazy night. I know, your your father took you to Blockbuster Video, which was Gen X, and then you're the millennial. Oh my god.
You actually wrote the one girl look like she It's so hilarious. I need to make you guys a video on the mystery school subscriber count to where um, our mystery school, it somehow gained five subs. Uh, miraculously, I don't know how it happens. We always gain a couple subs, but in in the in the graphs, we're always losing subs. It's it's hilarious how many people unsubscribe to our mystery school. As in, w what is it like for people? The, does somebody watch a mystery school video? Then uh, I they think I'm hating something. They think I'm hating something that they agree to hate. Then my next video, they watch that video not being able to comprehend any of it. Just thinking I'm hating the same thing that they're hating on. Then they watch my next video and go, he's not on the same page as me. He's not hating the correct things that, that I hate. And then they unsubscribe from my channel. <laughs> Hurtin' for a squirtin'? Mm-hmm, yeah, hurtin' for a squirtin', I wrote that. In the 2000s, it felt like every single week there was a brand new icon. Look how he's gonna say, look how, this is how he's laying the narrative. The foundation for they don't know how it happened. For, for, no! Guys, all these things have been destroyed for the last 10 years. There hasn't been a comedy movie made in the last 10 years, and then these um, Goyim here are here to go, oh my God, I'm just noticing right now. Hey guys, it's been 10 years. It's been 10 years, and I'm just noticing right now. Do, the, do these Goyim not live in just a whole world? Of, it's all ignorance. It's like an ocean of ignorance that these people live in, and the waves of ignorance are just crashing crashing over their heads just and they they willfully they willfully create their whole lives of the ignorance that life already is life already is an ocean of ignorance and all the waves are crashing on you and they double down on it they fucking double down on whoa hey it's been 10 years since a, it's since an actual movie was created i don't know how that could have ever ever happened i'm a perfect person that lives in a perfect world comedy film bora anchorman step brothers these films would create see this shit's sad this shit's sad cuz this shit was awesome um this is called capitalism and freedom do they don't understand that it requires freedom to have these types of movies. It requires the freedom culture to be able to do any of this shit. In the, why would we not be able to have the same freedom anymore? Because millennials took it away from us with how they made the internet all parodies, all communism. I wonder how the millennial explains himself. I mean, none of this is my opinion. Um, it, all you got to do is understand that this is what smart people warned everybody about through all history. Brand new iconic comedy film. Boring. I, I must be one of those smart people. Command, Step Brothers. These films would create these kind of cultural memes. Can we just become best friends? Yep. Maybe. And you know what? I almost have to lay off the sat. I'm finding out that when I do that kind of that style of satire, the grandiose style of satire, it actually attracts schizophrenic people. I got to figure out how it's, it's already difficult being a mystery school. Just the way that a mystery school operates, the general public will fucking hate me and try to cancel me at every fucking moment. The, the general public will be out to kill me like they killed Jesus Christ. So while the general public hates me, I can't get anybody to understand what I'm actually doing. Um, it's nothing special. It's psychology. It's the human condition. It's understanding how all of us are conditioned to have narcissistic personality disorder. It, it pushes away the general public. They get fucking scared of everything that I'm doing. It's so difficult for them. Then it attracts all the fucking schizophrenic, fucking mentally ill people. So while I make all these videos on the fucking mental illness, it attracts all the mentally ill people. Then the mentally ill people think I'm talking about something, somebody other than them.
up as the characters for Halloween, but for some strange Oh, reason, and then, and then, and then I shouldn't leave out you. Then there's you, who is a regular fucking sane person, and you're just learning at the mystery school like regular sane people should be doing all the fucking time. Your best friends, yep! Maybe you dress up as the characters for Halloween. Oh, I'm, ar I'm ar aren't I? I'm already making this video too long. I'm rambling and I'm talking and it's all the shit that I want to say, though. It it's really all the shit I want to get across iconic comedy so book. so tell me about all these beautiful movies man all this beautiful where the the i'll also say the template for this shit was getting kind of stagnant it was like making the same movie over and over and over again i was actually sick of all of this shit because i notice how everything repeats i notice how you can't make a new story so it's just the same fucking template. Th this template needed to evolve, and it and it, of course it did with some with some styles of comedy and all that. But they figured out that and, and this template came from something like the tarot cards because it's the hero's journey with the fool's journey. It's mixing the the fool's journey and the hero's journey, and you get one of these comedy movies. Uh, still the. Oh, I hate to I hate to say all this while I have it on Borat. It's more of like, um, yeah, yeah, all these other '90s figures, the early 2000s '90s figures. In the 2000s, it felt like every single week there was a brand new iconic comedy film. Borat, Anchorman, Step Brothers. These films would create these kind of cultural memes. Can we just become best friends? If I have to hear some millennial say the word meme again, I'm gonna shoot myself in the fucking face. I I don't want to live in a world where everything's considered a meme. We used to have proper English and all kinds of words to describe things and everything has been reduced to the savages. Everything has been reduced to low IQ. Everything is a meme. I don't want to live in a world where um, everything is a fucking meme, where we got rid of every single fucking word and meme is supposed to describe everything. Maybe you dress up. That's some low IQ pe people shit. Would create these kind of cultural memes. Can we just become best friends? Col they create like these cultural me. I, I can't. Ha I can't take it. Step brothers. I, I, I wake when I wake up in the world. Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I go. I don't want to live in this world. I don't want to live in this world where millennials destroyed my childhood. They've turned everything I know into communism. Then they pretend that they don't know how it happened after they collect all their money. After they all become millionaires and they've sold out all of reality and trashed everything, they pretend that they don't know how it happened. While you and I have documented all of this over the last 10 years. Over the last 10 years, I've made plenty, countless videos, thousands of videos saying it's going to take them about 10 years to even notice. And we're finally here. It's been 10 years and they're finally noticing that they live in communism, that they live in shit, that they have nothing. They'll never understand it's them that destroyed freedom in the first place create these kind of cultural memes can we just become best friends yep maybe you dress up as the characters for halloween but for some strange i feel like i feel like after all this monologue that i've done all this real real talking and the real thing i feel like i should just be able to upload this guy's video to my channel i mean it all i i just qualified for the most fair use in all of youtube with just just the little monologue i did is the most original thing you'll find on youtube just become best friends, yep! Maybe you dress up as the characters for Halloween. But for some strange reason, in the last seven or so years, comedy films have just disappeared. And today we're going to answer the question... Uh, uh, dude, shouldn't you be ashamed that, um, seven years, bro? Seven years. It's taken you... It's really been probably like ten years. It's taking you... You don't, you don't find any humility. There's no humility to be found with these things that think that they're perfect people in a perfect world. There's no humility. There, there's no... He doesn't even realize. And none of them will. They'll humiliate you if you brought it up. If you said, do you realize that you just said seven years? Did you realize you just said it took you seven years to realize entertainment doesn't exist anymore? 
seven or so years, comedy films have just disappeared. And today we're going to... Just... Di guys, it was overnight. L look at the phrasing. Guys, oh, it was seven years ago since a comedy movie was made, but they just disappeared overnight. No, you said seven years. Um, it, you Seven years going by and you not noticing... That's not comedy disappearing overnight. Look at look at their derangement. Look at how insane humanity is. Because this is how they all act with every fucking thing. Look at how they lie. Look at how humanity is one big fucking liar that hides all of its lies from itself and believes that it's not a liar. It believes no, 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 no. Uh, they they truly believe. That, no, it disappeared overnight because I'm just noticing. It's taken me seven years to notice, but when I try to explain it, I say, I don't know, it just disappeared overnight. But but a, a movie hasn't been made in seven years. So that would mean that it didn't just disappear overnight. Come best friends, yep. Maybe you dress up as the characters for how I told you guys, this is exactly what they would do. When it takes them 10 years to realize, this is exactly what they fucking do. Look at the fucking mental illness of how humanity lies to itself. And that's that will be the narrative that, guys, it just disappeared. Guys, we're perfect people that live in a perfect world doing perfect things all the time. And guys, I'm just noticing. Guys, a, a movie hasn't been made in the last seven years, guys. It just disappeared overnight. They, they won't understand that. They'll, they'll really believe that it disappeared overnight. And they're perfect people that live in a perfect world. These kind of cultural memes. Can we just become best friends? Yep! Maybe you dress up as the characters for Halloween. But for some strange reason, in the last seven or so years, <laughs> comedy films have just disappeared. And today we're going to answer the question, why? Cancel culture. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. Subscribe. Obviously, I'm just... Uh, are you going to tell... Are you going to... Uh, are you going to tell me to where your sponsor is Saturn? Squarespace? The cube, the, the Saturn cube is your sponsor, Square Space. Much more to it than that. And today we're going to... Uh, hey guys, you know what would be funny? Is if uh, just another thing is named after Saturn. This time we call it Square Space. No, no one's going to notice. It, it, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Guys, this, this time we won't call it the cube of Saturn. This time we'll call it Square Space. Explore the death of the comedy film. What are you doing? Burying you. Oh, 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 oh. Hold, hold on a second. Hold on. Look, look, look at what he did. He has um, Hollywood. If you're watching this, you know, some people like to listen. He has a little, a little skit for us where he's showing Hollywood is the one destroying comedy movie. Hollywood is burying comedy movies. It couldn't be millennials in the internet. Millennials. Yeah, Hollywood's the one that makes the movies. Millennials are the one that destroyed it all with the internet. And millennials want to turn around and blame Hollywood for it, but not themselves. So l look at this little skit that he has. Much more to it than that. And today we're going to explore the death of the comedy. Oh, and it's how millennials think that they're doing something original. So millennials do this all the time. They take a movie made by Generation X and then look, they, they just put um, words on it. <laughs> look at this shit. <laughs> comedy movies, that's like a corpse being buried alive. Um, and who's the one that's burying the corpse? Who, who's the one that does? Is it the internet that is communism that actually destroyed everything? Or do you blame it on Hollywood who actually makes the movies? Oh, they're, they're saying that Hollywood's not them. Not them. Isn't that weird? Isn't that weird? It's really the internet and the communism and the, of the internet that destroyed our culture. But they want to say it's the ones making the movies. Well, the internet made it impossible to make any of these movies anymore. The internet canceled everybody. The internet destroyed culture. The internet took away all of our freedom and replaced it with communism. You, it takes freedom to make movies like this. So let's start with the history of comedy. You know, comedy was first discovered in 1886. That right there was a joke. Comedy. It was. 
It was, I, I didn't realize that that, oh, yeah, that's a millennial. I, now I realize what destroyed the world. That's the point. You make each other laugh, reflect on life, society. It, it's so sad that he's playing all these clips. It just makes me remember that, fuck, it was awesome, wasn't it? Freedom was awesome funny things we come together mike myers austin pa all these fucking brilliant movies these brilliant characters it all took freedom to make it yeah as early as the greeks we don't have freedom anymore that's why the movies aren't made anymore plays and of course will, will they be able to figure that out no they have it's we we're, you and i we're gonna watch how they establish their narrative isn't it gonna be weird it's gonna be weird what I haven't watched this video. I'm wondering myself, how are they gonna do this? They have to sell it as in, but what, see, they're already doing it. They have to sell it as in, we're millennials that live in a perfect world and we're entitled to everything. And, and, and we can't know how anything happened and everybody owes us everything. And we're perfect millennials that live in a perfect world. And we didn't even know that Hollywood destroyed its own movies. It, 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 it's going to be amazing how millennials blame everything but themselves while they claim they live in a perfect world full of perfect people. Shakespeare, who'd write banger after banger, redefining the English language, all whilst putting a little smile on your face. And then by the late 1800s to early 1900s, you know, that's what destroyed it. Look at the way he talks about Shakespeare. They don't, they'll never know how they destroyed their own culture. Look how condescending. Look how it's not descent. Look at how it's the formula and the recipe to bring the negative equation into reality, the postmodernist equation, and destroy your own culture with it. He plays, and of course, you have Look at the way he talks about Shakespeare. We come together and share laughter. As early as the Greeks, there were comedy plays, and of course, you had boy Shakespeare, who'd write banger after banger. <laughs> there was Shakespeare that would write banger after banger? Did you know? I can't find something that stupid in the movie Idiocracy. The, Idioc the movie Idiocracy is trying to go way far out of its way to say things that fucking stupid. And... The, in real life is more stupid than idiocracy. Look at how uh, we should take the movie Idiocracy, put it up against us. We won't be able to find something stupid said that's this stupid. That w hey, there's Shakespeare, and he put out a couple bangers. Greeks have a comedy play. It's exactly the way that they wrote the script for Idiocracy. And it's literally how people talk nowadays. They're more stupid than the movie Idiocracy. Porsche, boy Shakespeare, who'd write banger after banger, redefining the English language, all whilst putting a little smile on your face. And then by the late 1800s to early 1900s, there would be the big screen, cinema. Silent, silent, it was silent films. You weren't allowed to... I know, it seems to be this is what this guy's videos are. He has no real intelligence or anything of his own. So he just tells us the history. Because Generation Z wouldn't know what he's talking about. All this shit is for Gen Z, who doesn't know what any of this shit is, and grew up in any of it at all. And it's a, it's a big story. It's exactly what the baby boomers did. The real story of the baby boomers is the baby boomers destroyed the 1950s exactly like millennials destroyed Generation X quiet there was no technology to record audio and so one of so me as generation x i've just been ignored my entire fucking life never given anything i've never been uh, i i want them all dead um i deserve a part in my life where i'm recognized i deserve something in life not to just be ignored my whole life i went from being ignored by all the baby boomers to canceled by all the millennials i would personally love to kill every single millennial i would love to fucking end the lives of all i deserve rights i deserve to live you know who took it all away from me these millennials that look at it look at his video Three days ago, he gets 46,000 views on his video that's not worth anything. He makes a, a man's living off of, this isn't worth it.
The, these millennials, they, do, look, they, they don't know how they trashed our reality because this stupid idiot millennial replaced the movies. These dumb little kids making a man's living on YouTube for nothing at all. They don't deserve money. They don't deserve anything. They replaced the movies. V video killed the radio star. I, can they even comprehend what that means things that you could translate with no audio was physical slapstick comedy you had man like buster keaton charlie chaplin harold lloyd these people had incredible physical comedy yeah these people had incredible physical comedy and were deserving to be movie stars what is making a millennial to be deserving of anything they turned our world into communism to make it so that the undeserving people are now deserving millennials are deserving of nothing they have no qualifications for any job at all what they did was they changed the rules that's the millennial new world is communism where you're not qualified to do anything anymore just everybody gets everything movement was amazing many people point to people like buster keaton as the origins of the sport of parkour but then into the mid 1900s there would be the introduction of sound we think too much and feel too little sound now allowed people to drop witty zingy i mean it even makes me sick it, it it should make you sick too if you're gen x you're closer to all this shit than anybody else as in the silent movies and because you're part of culture Millennials are not part of culture. Millennials are communism that destroyed the culture. So if you're Gen X, you should feel part of, of how movies were made and the silent movies and the discover. That's part of your world. That's part of your progression in culture. Millennials are the destruction of all culture. They bring nothing. They bring... Co so it's like a spit in the face when a millennial tries to talk about when movies were good. When th That's not what a millennial is. A millennial's here to destroy it all and give it all to a millennial. It's much like the great joke that I delivered at the start of the video. As a different genres would come along, you'd have satire, parody, dark comedy, blockbusters, teen comedy. Oh, and, and uh, yeah, oh my god, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Uh, these these movies, I mean, this is the golden era uh, of of it all. Rom-coms, zom-coms, john-coms. Oh, bloody hell. Sorry about it. Comedy as a genre has pretty much always been a dominant genre of film. I'll just take my word for it. I, ha I have the graphs to prove it. This graph right here shows us from 1943 to 2021 what the top grossing film genres were. And since the very beginning of this graph, comedy has always dominated. No matter what the era the world was going through, if, if people were being blown up in war, if there was the fear that the communists were going to take over, or that we were going to be decimated by nuclear bombs, people still like Oh, I'm smoking on a big fat cigar and I just barely, sometimes I'll just barely inhale it because you, you can't really inhale a cigar. Well, you'll know why when you smoke one of these big fat real cigars, that shit is so potent. Like I'm struggling over here not to have a coughing attack because this cigar is particularly really strong. <laughs> really and i and i barely just inhaled a little not even not even enough to go into your lungs or anything like that and it's like i'm struggling over here not to cough and do it it's so potent so strong Laugh. Some would say that comedy was an escapism from reality during hard times. Some... Comedy is an escapism. No, it's there to learn about yourself. The invention of comedy is that it works the same way as a mystery school does. It, you think that it's a comedy is there to show you the lies that you tell to yourself, but it's there to show you that everybody does it just like I do. But people will never get that. They'll never get how it's everybody. They think that it's the main component. So comedy, they don't understand that it comes from mystery schools. They don't understand that comedy is only exists to show you to yourself. But see, you think it's funny when you're in an audience, when people are thinking that, oh, it's everybody and just everything. And most of the time people think 
that they are they're perfect people and it's somebody else. But comedy, all these comedy movies are there to reveal you to yourself. It's the tarot cards. It's the mission of the fool and the mission of the hero. And you're supposed to learn all about yourself within there. And that's the purpose of these movies. That's the purpose of all of these comedy stylings. It's purposely made for you to learn about yourself. But if you're a general public, uninitiated, dumb fuck piece of shit, a worthless, low IQ fucking imbecile. See, I'm laying it on thick right there. Because now I'm just laughing at how that right that right there where I'm doing satire, but I'm all, I'm also being very truthful at the same time. It, for some reason, it attracts schizophrenia people. It, it attracts the mentally ill people that I talk about in every single one of these fucking videos. Comedy was a mirror to reflect some of the ills of society. But see, it's a, understand it's different, as in. Every single human being, unless you are developing a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's a guarantee you have the narcissistic personality disorder. Everybody has uh, this narcissistic personality disorder, which is a mental illness. That's, that's regular shit that you and I can take care of with awareness. We can cure that. The, the thing that sucks is I end up attract, like, uh, right, I'll end up attracting People that are clinically schizophrenic. I can't help you if you're clinically schizophrenic and you don't know that you're clinically. So you think that you're on to something. You think that you're discovering the next big thing and it's really your fucking schizophrenia. I'm so sick of attracting people that have schizophrenia. I I'm supposed to be attracting people that are normal people, but you have the demi urge and you don't realize it. You just grew up in this world. You thought that the world's normal as you know that it's not. And you need some questions answered and you need to be shown the demi urge. A vessel. And then it'll hurt you. And there's a whole series of things that you'll hate me. You'll hate me for showing you all this shit. Then when you finally get it and you walk past it, then you'll love me for all of that but none of that happens when people are actually clinically mentally ill i cannot help you if you're clinically mentally ill but you also can't help yourself because there's no way to actually show you you will never get that you're actually mentally Ill. you'll never get it social critique and some would say comedy would say the things that no one else was allowed to say it was the you know what it is too i don't want to leave it vague i i'm going to make its own video for it L look at these L look at these Look at these comments. Gravity has never been proven. Yeah, things are a naming system. Yeah, but see, gravity is a real thing because when you drop something, it falls to the ground. But we've already learned. Um, gravity is not a force. Einstein was right. See, you don't know real science, bro, because you're schizophrenic. You don't understand that, that Einstein already figured all this shit out with time dilation. You should go learn what time dilation is so that you finally understand what gravity is, but it doesn't matter to you because you're schizophrenic, dude. So like, let, let's look at this comment. All the, all the, I, I'm, I'm so sick of attracting people like this when all my satire is designed to rub the common man wrong, get the common man to hate me, then the common man walks through this fucking fire. Then the common man all of a sudden loves me for all this shit. So, yeah. Who could insult the king to his face. And if we look at the history, the idea of comedy just completely dying seems impossible. It'd be like me saying water's gonna- All right, let's get back into the video. The actual video. Yes, at the time that you're living in freedom see that's what we should call this shit because that's what it is it's called freedom yes when you're living in freedom you think there's no way anybody could ever destroy the freedom you think that you're impenetrable to the communism you think that you're a perfect person that lives in the perfect world and communism could never destroy your freedom and it did the millennials brought the communism that destroyed everybody's freedom was the jester who could insult the king to his face. And if we look at the history, the idea of comedy just completely dying seems impossible. It'd be like me saying water's gone. I'm, I'm still waiting for your, your ad, man. Where's your Squarespace? Where's your Saturn ad? You get paid by Saturn. 
to do all this shit. You get paid by the demi urge to do all this shit. Your water. Drink some prime, you pussy. A potential scandal with the Buffalo PD surfaced today when the mayor. <coughs> <laughs> and it seemed as though up until recently comedy films were just getting bigger and bigger we're going by the statistics we looked at earlier the up until recently hey guys his vi isn't it weird how they're doing this look his video's three days old um there hasn't been a movie made in seven years in seven years hopefully i have the context wrong hopefully i'm not understanding that wrong. did he just say because that's imagine that you've never been to the mystery school. Imagine you're one of these general public idiots and you haven't he heard me say all this shit over the last 10 years. Like, what do you think? If you're oblivious to everything, uh, you, you'd you be one dumb motherfucker and the shit that you would say would be some real dumb shit like what's being said. What's, tell me again. So up until recently. Up until recently. So, uh, comedy disappeared seven years ago but somehow it disappeared overnight somehow it's just recently gone as as we say that a movie hasn't been made in the last seven do you see how they do it do you see how this derangement works do you see how the duality works my friends i'm making this video for a real purpose to show you how the duality of human beings work how they know that they, they, they're liars out of both sides of their mouth they're duality liars, where in everything they hold two competing ideas. You know that that's what makes people crazy? That that's... Uh, the, a couple things is the defining factor in being crazy. People not knowing the difference between wrong and right is what defines people as crazy. Also, holding two competing ideas in your head like all these human beings do is the definition of crazy to where you're like, oh, out of one side of my mouth, I say a, a movie hasn't been made in seven years. Out of the other side of my mouth, I say movies just disappeared overnight and nobody could, it's recent. Somebody took the movies away recently and I didn't notice. See how none of, the, none of them make sense? None of them. These are the people that think that they're logical. They think that they're rational. Nothing of them. Nothing. This is the human condition that all human beings are under. And it is pure insanity of holding two competing ideas in your head that's what classifies you as insane these are go nowhere do nothing people you can't ever do anything if you hold these two competing they think it's a cheat code do they they think this is when all these videos when i talk about humanity thinks it has a great cheat code the way that they're two-faced liars it makes me think of the motley crew album um I, I forget the name of the album, but it's just the the happy face and sad face of the theater. You know, you have the theater and it has those two masks, the happy face and the sad face. And that's who every single human being is. So just basic Motley Crue album cover, the, the album art for Motley Crue explains everything that's going on here far beyond my words see that's what's brilliant about symbolism it takes all of these words that i'm saying that i say for an hour an hour and a half i make a video two hours long and the symbolism conveyed a lot hell of a lot more information we would get just by understand just by understanding the symbolism of a motley crew album cover you understand more than all these words that I'm saying. Hey, when the mayor the chip. the chip. And I, I should just sit back over here and smoke weed and play Demon Souls. Because that's what I'm playing now. After I beat Dark Souls too many times, I played Elden Ring so many fucking times. I'm waiting for the DLC to come out. And now I'm on to Demon Souls because it's um, the remake is free with PlayStation Plus, and uh, maybe I should just kick back, smoke my cigar, smoke some weed, uh, play some Demon Souls, and then just let the rest of the video play. And it seemed as though up until recently, comedy films were just getting bigger and bigger. We're going by the statistics we looked at earlier, the comedy film was the biggest genre of movie in the 90s. I mean, there were so many comedies, a lot of them shit, to be honest. Didn't your mothers ever tell you not to play with guns? <laughs> the, 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 this is so hilarious. This is when millennials 
are talking about movies made for children. Millennials think that movies like Super Mario Brothers are supposed to be good movies. Remember a, a while, Jim Carrey was in it. When it's like Sonic the Hedgehog, whatever that is, that's a movie made for children three years old. That That's so mommy can get some time to clean the house and do the dishes and do shit around the house. And then she puts her child in front of the TV and it's not supposed to be good. It's not supposed to have good acting. It's supposed to have a lot of lights in it and a lot of movement so that it attracts the attention of children three and under. Millennials, uh, the, they've always done it. Millennials believe that movies for children three years old and under are supposed to be blockbuster movies with amazing scripts. And they believe that these movies made for three-year-olds and under are special specially made for millennials that everything there could never even look at how millennials have taken all of the toys they've taken all of children this is like bully shit it truly is millennials are bullies they've taken all the toys away from children and given it to themselves so what what and i'm serious what toys do children play with because millennials have deemed everything for them so uh, uh, when a millennial sees a movie for three-year-olds they go that was especially made for me so then what's made for three-year-olds nothing nothing because millennials believe everything is theirs and it's supposed to be a blockbuster hit but some of what what movie even was that Look, 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 it's a kid in the in the movie. The kid's probably like seven years old. Yeah, because it's a movie for three-year-olds. I mean, there was so many... What, what movie is this? I, I want to laugh at how it truly is a movie for fucking three-year-olds, just like they did to Super Mario Brothers and Sonic the Hedgehog, and somehow those are supposed to be good movies. A lot of them shit, to be honest. Didn't your mothers ever tell you not to play with guns? There's no way that that's a movie for fucking adults. There's no way that that's a movie for, like, preteens. That's a movie for fucking three-year-olds. But some of them were iconic. Here's a movie for adults. Here's a movie for Generation X. Not, not millennials. This is Generation X shit. It's for adults. They can't, it's true. Millennials can't tell the difference between things for kids and things for adults. Millennials just believe, and this is a big, uh, when you understand this, you'll understand the internet. You'll understand how in the future, there'll be no such thing as a minor anymore. See, I should have been making videos on this also for the last 10 years. The millennial plan is to get rid of minors and everything for adults is also for minors. Do you know why? Because in the 1950s, we used to have language for children and we had language for adults. So if you turned on like an old school, like, um, I don't know, baby boomer TV show, it's going to have a lot of language that children aren't going to understand. Do you know what millennials think about that? They think, no, you're lying to children. Every You shouldn't have language that children shouldn't understand. You're lying to the kids. Millennials want to get rid of minors and make everything identical for every fucking buddy. It's a big deal how millennials can't tell the difference between movies made for three-year-old children and movies made for adults. They just think it's all equal. Ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? I mean, I talk, I give away too much real information. I talk too much. If you're learning for real at the mystery school with this vast wisdom that I'm actually giving you, um, please donate. Please donate to the Cash App. Please donate to the Venmo. Please donate to the PayPal. Join the Patreon. Very often they would be very particular actors and comedians that would be the main star of the successful comedy films. Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey was known for his like maniac energy. He was crazy and strange, bombastic. Yeah, yeah, I know. I just made a video. I just made a video on it. Yeah. And then you had your boy Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler was. I hated Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler is a fucking moron. Adam Sandler is not funny. Adam Sandler is 
com- is shit for fucking three year olds. Adam Sandler is fucking stupid. Adam Sandler was the was the end of it all. And like Jim Carrey, he was more laid back. So I mean, shit. I know why everybody loved Adam Sandler. He's stupid, just like everybody. It's fucking idiot shit. There's nothing fucking. Oh, the Adam Sandler comedy literally is for a three year old. With an old childish sense of humor. But Adam Sandler had a little something else. You know, he had, he had a heart. There were moments where he, he had really- a he had a heart. Your oh, especially when Adam Sandler thought that he was a serious actor. Those are the worst movies ever fucking made. Jim Carrey was an absolute superstar. When Jim Carrey moved from like comedies to serious movies to comedies to serious movies, it was seamless. You really knew that that Jim Carrey is like, Jim, you're born for this. You're really fucking good at the... You know who's really fucking bad at this shit? Adam Sandler. Make you laugh one I, I, that, that's like a crime to, to the general public. The general public loves Adam Sandler because Adam Sandler is so stupid just like they are. They light up when they see Adam Sandler. They think Adam Sandler's just like them and they would be right. You cry the next, and so with the. Oh, I can just see. I can just see in all in all in all my um stats. I can just see all the people unsubscribing from the. That's what happens when when I do that. When I'm when I tell the truth about Adam Sandler and how stupid people actually are. That's when they start unsubscribing from my mystery school, and that and then I say, "Fuck! I took out the trash. I didn't want you at my mystery school. So please unsubscribe. Get the fuck out of here." There, in steps, my favorite era of comedy films, the 2000s. Before we continue with this video, I want to give a. Ma- he wants to give his massive shout out to Squarespace to Saturn. Shout out to a Squarespace. Squarespace is the number one platform for building. And- I just figured it was his last commercial, so why not just have it as all of his commercials? You know. Your own personal. You know, hey, in Mecca. They'll all walk around the cube. In, in some way or shape or form, you're going to be um, worshipping that Saturn cube, whether you uh, realize it or not. So in this instance, it, we're, it's going to be called Squarespace. Website. Competition these days when it comes to business is fierce. You know, when, it's funny. Like when people graduate, they become more stupid than they were before. They graduate from high school and they become left brain idiots. They graduate from um, college. They, they're more stupid than they were before. And they wear that fucking square on their head. You know, the Masons. The Masons, they put all their uh, cement. They use your head. Yeah, and you have that square. It's our table. And we mix up cement and we mix it on your head. And you have that square space on top of your head. And then we take our trowel and then we build walls that you'll never penetrate, Goyim. So we, the Goyim get enslaved inside of walls that are built off the top of their graduation caps. You know, that they, they have that graduation cap and it's a square. They have square space. They're wearing square space on their heads. Then masons mix up c- cement and use that square as a table. And then, um, oh, well, if you're an actual real mason like I am in the real world and you really do work with concrete and build walls and, and buildings and all that, you, you really have mixed up a lot of concrete on top of people's heads just like masons do. Great way of separating yourself from your competition is having a beautiful website. You know, well, what's, ma- what's making all human beings so stupid that they can't realize that movies died seven years ago and they're the culprit? They're to blame while they believe that it died overnight because they live in square space, because their heads are square space, because they are literally Saturn brand maybe you're a pt with squarespace's tools such as e-commerce oh squarespace eh oh i am loving for 400 years that word has kept us down what the f- 
The 2000s, man. The 2000s was a, a beautiful era. It was a great time. It was the best time to be alive. Everyone was having fun. We're all happy. Music was cheesy. People were joking, having fun. 9-11 did happen. It wasn't so good. In the wars, the financial crash. But we had good comedy films. And there was just so many memorable films in this era. Like, as I mentioned, Step Brothers, Borat, Anchorman, Blades of Glory, Hangover, 40-Year-Old Virgin. These and were... It's sad. It's sad how you destroyed it, Millennial. It's sad, all these brilliant movies, all this creativity, and it all amounts to freedom. What you destroyed is freedom. What won the Cold War? Blue jeans. But Elvis and blue jeans and Coca-Cola is what won the Cold War against Russia the last time. Well, now we don't have freedom anymore. So what wins wars? We don't have the tools to win wars. Freedom is what wins wars, not war. War doesn't win war. Freedom, already having freedom installed, is what won the Cold War. We don't have freedom anymore. So what the fuck can win wars? Because war doesn't win war. Bangers, chart topping chocolates. In this era, it honestly felt like every few weeks there was a comedy film that would come out and just shape and redefine this era. Much like that genre defining joke that I delivered at the start of the video. But in all of this genre, there would be one man that would dominate it all. And that was Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell? Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell was Will Ferrell. The Will Ferrell movie basically became its own genre and its Well, own I definitely wouldn't agree with that. It's a lot of movies and a whole host of characters characters and there's many characters and will ferrell yeah will ferrell made a lot of fucking movies at that time and it but will ferrell was not the fucking star of this kind of shit god the boy just had the golden touch remember how amazing remember airplane remember that type of the the leslie nielsen type comedy and then the scream movies came out which is utilizing that style of could that's not will ferrell the, 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 I, I just i just i i just have a problem with that sell something in the 2000s either put a picture of boobs bum or will ferrell's face on it he just had this strange comedy where he was a, like a child like uh, like all those adam sandler movies that was the new rat pack like uh, that whole host of and will ferrell wasn't in that whole host of characters with that so he's after it like there's a there's a whole setup here that you're missing a grown 40 year old man's body you play these absurd ridiculous characters all the while keeping a very straight serious you know, you know what name i'm trying to think of i'm trying to think of david spade i'm trying to think of you know you know if you were gonna put a fucking face on this shit and put a name on it the name and the face is Chris Farley and David Spade. If you wanted to say anybody was responsible, if you wanted to put a face and a name over all of these movies and the freedom and all of that, it's David Spade and Chris Farley. Then, then, uh, then people like this, Will Ferrell came after from Anchorman to Elf, Step Brothers, Talladega Nights and Old See, I think that's the I think that's pro the problem of a millennial trying to explain all this shit because a millennial would be explaining the tail end. When this shit was in its golden age, a millennial was in diapers. Uh, there's nothing a millennial has no comprehension. So, uh, of course, a millennial trying to explain this would explain it all through Will Ferrell cuz that was the end. That, that's when a millennial um, could actually comprehend things because it was grown up enough to comprehend things. These films will be remembered as some of the best of the 2000s. Will Ferrell. You, you know what I'm hoping? It, just like I've been doing for years, I'm hoping that most of you realize that you were Generation X. That's what I, that you associate yourself to all this shit. Then you call yourself a millennial. Uh, there's a problem. You're really Generation X. Most of you, just about all of you, are really Generation X. And I'm trying to bring you to the realization that, wait a minute, if you grew up in all this shit and it was your entire world, then you know when the world was destroyed? Yeah, seven to ten years ago when all this shit was extinct. Well, I mean, you're Generation X because your childhood was all these movies. 
I, I'm trying to get most of you to realize that you were always Generation X and you've been fooled. You've been fooled. By, what, what would, what a, you grew up as Generation X. You've always known yourself as Generation X. Then you were fooled into be, being told that you're somehow a millennial. You need to investigate to figure out that you are actually Generation X. On Burgundy. Who's that handsome devil? And so I want to kind of analyze what makes these comedy films iconic and this iconicness that existed then but doesn't really exist now. Firstly, I would say there were memes. They weren't called memes back then, but they were like these memorable jokes, these one liners that people would then. I know, use see, they're, they're called one liners. I don't want to live in a world where it's all reduced to memes. I, I, I want, I, I hate the, I hate, I hate, hate, hate. Everything that millennials have done, every fucking bit of it. In the real world, Step Brothers had boats and hose. Did we just become best yeah, friends? They're, they're, they're called one liners, not memes. So many activities. Borat had half five, great success. Uh, uh, and, then Zoom and how dumb. I mean, all the Goyam don't have lives of their own. So, of course, the only thing that they can do is copy these one liners. It's pretty, it's pretty fucking sad. That had the blue still face. On top of memes, there were also these like hilarious standout scenes. Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? Uh. Hangover with the blackjack scene where Alan became Rain Man, and Anchorman where they had the big fight scene. As well, there were very notable and defined characters that often dressed in a funny way. This style of dressing would become a costume that many would wear at Halloween. And so in the 2000s, things were going well. Maybe just a little too well. We were talking today, or yesterday rather, with Russell Peters about when was the last time you saw a good comedy movie, and can you make a good comedy movie anymore? Many say that 2014 was the last year of big blockbuster comedies. The year that comedy died. And that last iconic comedy film being 22 Jump Street, a sequel of 21 Jump Street, which was a kind of remake of an old TV show. 22 Jump Street had all of the key components of what I said made an iconic comedy film earlier. It had the meme one-liner with... Uh, I, I thought the meme one-liner is when he goes, most people know the the comedy and these movies died seven years ago. No, they don't. People don't even realize it to this day. No, no, they absolutely don't. This is how you goyim fucking lie, and you think that you always knew something, and you think that you always got. And this is what you goyim do. You didn't notice for fucking seven years. Then you go, but I, but uh, no, I always knew, and I'm in control of everything. I'm a perfect person in a perfect world that controls everyone and everything, and nothing could ever go on without my knowing. I'm just realizing now that it's been seven years. Yeah. As well, it had the memorable scenes, like the slam poetry scene and the sequel end credit sequence. And like, after this film, it becomes really difficult to point to an iconic comedy film. One that no one would argue is a legendary comedy film. And that's not to say that there hasn't been good comedies or even great comedies, but none of these films really permeated society in the same way that something like 22 Jump Street did, or the countless other- yeah. I, I wonder if it's the internet. Uh, let's see. This is a, the time that the internet became monetized. I wonder. I wonder if there's any correlation between video killed the radio star. I don't know. Is there any correlation between the monetization of the internet and the death of freedom itself? In the last All these movies are looked at as freedom itself, and the internet is communism that destroyed it all. I wonder if there's any correlation between the death of freedom and the monetization of the internet. Oh, this is so, oh nobody could ever crack this case. Oh no, it 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 re, it takes people knowing themselves. It takes a, an education at the mystery school. If not, you're just. 100% blind, you're just a stupid fucking idiot. Is prior. It seemed as though, for whatever reason, comedy had just died. And I got stats to prove it. <laughs> hey guys, for whatever reason, nobody could ever know what that reason is. Guys, it's vague. Guys, it's me who's responsible for it. That's how I don't know. I don't know how it got destroyed, guys. Yeah, because it's them that did it. They're looking for a boogeyman outside of them. So instead of knowing it's them, they say, 
nobody could ever know. Oh, it's a nobody could ever crack the case on this one as he claims that he's going to crack the case on it. Isn't this fascinating? Isn't it fascinating how mentally ill human beings actually are? These people that believe they're sane. These people that believe they would call you crazy for coming to the mystery school. Look how fucking crazy these people are. Whatever reason. Yeah, you come to the to the mystery school to learn how crazy life actually is and how these crazy people believe they're sane people that are perfect people that live in a perfect world and it's somebody else that introduced communism. It's somebody some other culprit other than them. Comedy had just died and I got stats to prove it. As you can see, the yellow and the light orange are like comedy and rom-coms. Comedy films seem to have majorly fallen out of like the top performing films. In fact, only three years were they in the top 10 and that was 2010, 2012, no, and 2013. No, 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 no. All entertainment died, not just comedy movies. See, the, the, is this their selective understanding? All music, all, all the whole entire culture died. All of freedom died and turned into communism. It is not only comedy movies movies no good movie has been made no good music has been made the culture has completely been dismantled and turned into communism other stats and articles showing this decline i'm not the only person who's noticed it and so you might be wondering why did it die every studio would put out several comedies every every year and there was like 45 or 46 comedies then all of a sudden they didn't have the money because the internet became monetized and all the money that's supposed to go to the movie studios now goes to little kids in their bedrooms. You know, little kids in their bedrooms are making the money that's supposed to be for a whole staff. It's supposed to pay like 10 to 20 to 50 different people that are all on payroll. But instead, all the money just goes to PewDiePie and everybody's cut out of the deal. So we don't get movies made any, anymore. You know why? Because all the budget that was for the whole movie, the whole staff, everything that takes to go into one movie, all that money doesn't go to thousands of people anymore. It goes to PewDiePie. Every year. And then now, last year, it was like six or seven. I wonder if there's any correlation of the monetization of the internet and the death of freedom. This is very complex, and it isn't just cancel culture, that's a part of it we'll get into, but there are many different factors that all play together. Firstly, we'll start off with the rise of the superhero film. In 2008, Iron Man was released, and um, every the, single film the, is a This is millennials. Millennials and their toys, and all their children shit. Millennials that believe that they own Star Wars, and it's not even their generation. I, Star Wars is my generation and they have all their toys. So um, I wonder why everything turned into superhero shit. Because millennials believe that they own children's things. So everything turned into superheroes movies. It's you who's responsible for that little kid millennial. Uh, th these millennials who have no emotional growth. These bullies that take children's toys away from children. And they give all the toys to them. Yeah, these superhero movies. They're supposed to... All that shit is supposed to be for children. Minors. Supposed to be for children. Why is all, did all this shit turn into to everything for everybody? Millennials. Uh, so how so how how is he gonna? Who's the culprit here? Who, who's he gonna say is the culprit? It was all well and good in the beginning because other genres. Could... I hate I hate all of them. This is stupid shit for children. I'm used to real smart shit. I'm used to things like the movie A Beautiful Mind. You know, with Russell Crowe and the acting is fucking magnificent in a movie like that. That's a triple A movie and it's made with fucking brains. It's smart shit. It's about schizophrenia and how dark schizophrenia. See, millennials, uh, the millennials could never understand topics like schizophrenia. And the actual big boy themes. All this superhero shit replaced intelligent stuff with baby toys. This is, this is the baby toys of millennials. 
Comics, but then in around about 2016, superhero films did something particular. They became self-aware. You may be wondering why the red suit. Well, that's so bad guys can't see that's you it, it, Oh my God. It's, this is a millennial. This is what millennials do. This is the same thing as millennials want to take away minors. As millennials think that, you know, in the 1950s, we had talk for adults and we had talk that children couldn't understand that's for, this is more of that, where millennials think you're lying to children. If you're saying sexual innuendos, you know, like how baby boomers, like the baby boomers have lots of sexual innu innuendos and children don't understand them because they're not supposed to. We have speak for adults and we have speak for children and children can't understand the adult speak. Millennials think that that's all a lie and they need to change it. So when you see a movie break the fourth wall, it's purposely doing that because millennials think that somehow everything's lying to them. But this is how millennials think that, that how to make an honest world. So now, um, we now children are just included in the sexual innuendo. So if you were if you were having a problem with drag queen story hour, millennials believe that that's the truth. Uh, millennials believe that children should be sexual beings just like everybody else because it's a great lie. So all these pedophiles that are millennials, this is just more of their, their pedophile shit where they believe there should be no difference between minors and adults. For where? You may be wondering why the red suit. Well, no, look, look, look. Look how everything I just said is the absolute truth. That's why the scene in the movie is like it is. Because other genres could exist, but then in around about 20... But what, why does the movie feel like it needs to break the fourth wall? Because it, millennials are hurt by sexual innuendos of the 1950s and thinks and thinks and they think that we should just include children into the. That's why the part like this exists. Steen, superhero films did something particular. They became self-aware. You may be wondering why the they Red became self-aware. See, we got rid of minors. See, children aren't self-aware to the innuendos and speak of adults. But us as millennials, we're bu we're building a perfect world of communism where we there's no distinction between a minors and adults anymore. Superhero films did something particular. They became self-aware. You may be wondering why the red suit. Well, that's so bad guys can't see me bleed. This guy's got the right idea. He wore the brown pants. Cue the music. That, Look at me. that scene right there is because the Dick Van Dyke show used to exist. And on the Dick Van Dyke show, they said sexual innuendos that children couldn't understand. This guy's got the right idea. Millennials are here to fix that and, and include children into sexual activities. Brown pants. Cue the music. Look at me, guys. I'm going to comment on the fact that superhero films are kind of corny. I'm going to do it to the camera. Look how funny that is. So obviously you had the film Deadpool with the characters. No, you, you, you don't understand why your own millennial kind does that? Because the Dick Van Dyke show hurts your feelings. You think that the the Dick Van Dyke show is somehow lying to everybody and we'd live in a perfect world when children are included in the sexual innuendo. Uh, yeah, it, was, it was like a tongue-in-cheek approach to a superhero film. And it's, so like a, many... it's like a tongue-in-cheek approach. No, no, you're purposely breaking the fourth wall because you think everything's lying to you and somehow this is being honest came along and did the exact same kind of format and basically swallowed up comedy things like guardians of the galaxy or thor 3 and even you would see some of these famous comedy All, actors uh, just, uh, this is more this is just more of how a millennial is offended by the dick van dyke show into superhero films. Uh, a, a millennial has all kinds of hurt feelings over the sexual innuendos that it can't understand and this was a, a millennial's remedy to that Rod, Chris Pratt, Ryan Reynolds. Look, look, look at how there's no distinction for if it's for children or for adults. 
And that's because, whether you like it or not, superhero films and animation films are money printers. Pretty much, if you dig up some shit comic book that no one in its time read and just pump millions and millions of dollars into it, you got a blockbuster hit. As well, for many of the comedy stars of the 2000s and 2010s, they often wanted to expand their career. Like, only so long do you want to be a silly, goofy comedy actor. Sometimes so, so we get it. Though we do get that this video is going to end just like the last one, it's going to have no ending at all, and no Goyam would ever fucking notice that. Prove that you got depth and range. Laughter. He, he'll never, he'll not know why. It'll be just like the last video. It's like fucking three card Monty here. It's below me. So more tamer superhero films and animation films started to really win over, especially in that family market, as well as like remakes of old classic hits. A lot of the time it comes down to franchises. Tried and tested characters that were popular at some point in the past tend to perform well because audiences trust that they liked it once, they're probably going to like it again. But most importantly, the most important part of why comedy films died is mainly international markets. I just want to take a quick second and remind you guys that we have just dropped the afters podcast I'm so oh man oh please can i tell me about your podcast bro i'm sure i'm sure you have really intelligent things i i really need to hear millennials speak on a podcast these dumbed down fucking morons that are more stupid than the idiot the, the movie idiocracy i can't wait to hear your podcast of dumb idiots anywhere else a very what what, what do they what do they think that they have to say in the fucking first place culturally to domestic american markets in these markets it's very easy to sell something like he, he's trying to blame it on china china no you blame it on the it's the internet and all in the monetization of the internet and the new world of pewdiepie the new world of, video killed the radio star Furious 92 or Fridge Man or some cute looking. If nobody gets it, you know, video killed the radio. So the radio star is freedom. You, do, you, do you guys get this? That millennials, you know, video killed the radio. They, they, they can't understand that it's them. It's their communism and monetization of the Internet. It's their Jake Paul. It's their Ethan Klein. It's their Mr. Beast. Don't they enjoy their Mr. Beast in entertainment? Because that's what replaced everything. All the money that's supposed to go to make these movies goes to Mr. Beast instead. Instead of going to thousands of people, it goes to one person. So I'll film that the millennials find they put thousands of people out of work all the people that would be working on these movies and all the money goes to Mr. Beast instead. And they think that that's fair. They put thousands of people out of work and they give all, all the money to themselves. They give all the money to PewDiePie. They give all the money to Ethan Klein. These, these internet people are multimillionaires. Do you know why they're multimillionaires? Because it's money that's supposed to go to hundreds, if not thousands of people. It's supposed to pay the salaries of hundreds of people. And instead of going to hundreds of people, it goes solely to Ethan Klein. It goes solely to Mr. Beast. That's what, how these people have become billionaires. Subtly touches on the desperation of human existence. It's far easier to sell these films to those markets because they're just big, visual, enjoyable films. Wow, this sounds real dumb. He's trying to tell us the international markets killed the freedom of the United States. So how? Where's the competing movies? Yeah, where? Where is Britain making movies? No, Britain worships the United States. Is Australia making? No, Australia worships the United States. Is Canada? Make a move. No, Canada worship. You all worship the United States. There is nothing competing. Communism of millennials destroyed all this shit. <laughs> you want to hear this again? Listen to him. He's, he's t saying competing international markets. Okay, well, where where is show me that? Where's the competing? You mean China? Is China? Who's the, who could possibly be the competing market? 
looking Pixar film that subtly touches on the desperation of human existence. It's far easier to sell these films to those markets because they're just big, visual, enjoyable films. Easy to dub and lots of it translates over. One of the main problems with comedy films is that jokes that might land in America might not be funny in different countries. What are you going to do today, Nepal? What? Uh, 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 that doesn't... All these countries worship the United States and watch all the United States movies and your culture is shaped by these United States movies. <laughs> he himself has an accent. He himself is not from the United States. And he's talking about that he gets them, but somehow the other people in Britain don't get them. Somehow these United States movies, it's so over the head of Canadians. Well, probably is, you know. These these United States movies, nobody from Australia could possibly get them. They it, it, All these con countries just worship the United States. They get all their entertainment from the United States. So... Um, Kind of doesn't make sense. No, nothing you're saying at this point makes sense because you're the culprit, dumbass. You're you, literally your YouTube channel where you get 46,000 views on your dumb videos here, guy. Um, you're the death of it. You are the international market, stupid millennial fucking piece of shit translates over one of the main problems with comedy films is that jokes that might land in america might not be funny in different countries what are you gonna do today napoleon what do i feel like i want to do gosh it's hey guys hey guys if you're too stupid for these movies you're too stupid to get napoleon dynamite if you don't live in the you're too stupid to get all this highbrow isn't that what he's saying that if you live in Australia, you couldn't understand that something as brilliant as the movie Napoleon Dynamite. The the Americans are just on such a different page than you are. To sell yeah, just your whole culture is just built of United States movies and shit anyway. American-centric comedies, where the humor often relies on the English language and a Western sense of humor, similar to that incredibly nuanced and culturally layered zinger that I dropped earlier. And then on top of all this, those markets, China and Russia particularly, have very high censorship. Many films that are sold in China have been re-edited to be appropriate for their, their country. You know, maybe if... This is, this is not the reason. The, this is what they came up with? They, their movies have been... Um, gone for the last seven years and they're just noticing now and the way that they do this the way that they try to explain it away is all i'll blame it on china i'll blame it on the censorship american america can't make american movies anymore because of the censorship of china no so you have to understand how the united states is censored because china it, it is not making sense because goyam don't make sense. They uh, all these goyim also owe me a lot of fucking money. All these shysty millennials that make all this money on the internet destroying our freedom. Well, they owe me all that money that they made. Show some LGBT people, or maybe a film's poster shows a black guy too. And, and understand, this is all the shit that uh, millennials argued for. That they called baby. They canceled the baby boomers to bring woke in. Millennials are responsible for woke. Everything that's woke is the millennial new world, where PewDiePie is making a better world, where Ethan Klein is making a better world. It's just another thing they pretend that they didn't do. Just slip. This is what they canceled baby boomers for. They canceled baby boomers and Gen X so that they could do this. Now they pretend that it's not them that did it. Too, too large. Shrink him down and then we'll buy the film. Or perhaps the film shows a flag that China doesn't like. But then on top of foreign censorship, there is then also the issue of American censorship, aka cancel culture. Have they made it so dangerous in terms of like being canceled that comedy movies are no longer something you can do? Everybody knows you never go forward. I'm recently retired. You are? Uh, yes. Hey, fuckers! Welcome to the neighborhood. My name is Craig. Um, the neighbor is a dope front lawn here. You and your homeboys can play on that. You know what? You can you can just say it looks good. Uh, right after you suck on these little Chinese nuts. So long, gay boys.
Now, I can't lie, this is a very tired conversation, but it is very important in this story. As many understand, Hollywood is Yeah, all of it comes from fucking millennials. Cancel culture is the millennial new world. Everybody had to be canceled. So millennials, you know why? It's back to the Dick Van Dyke show again. And, it, and nothing could be more serious. It, it's really the cause. Millennials are offended by all the innuendos said in a Dick Van Dyke show. And this is how a millennial, I have a different way of doing things, a different way, because millennials think that somehow the se that children should be included into the sexual innuendo very progressive people. It's a bit of an echo chamber, a, a hive mind of progressive political views. And a lot of these people don't believe in comedy in the sense of making fun of people who they consider below them. They have this idea of punching up and down, whereby if you're in a position of power societally or culturally, you can't make jokes of people who are below you. Comedy should punch up. You should never punch down. You should never punch down. Sometimes you've got to punch down. Like if you're beating up a disabled toddler. Yeah, I know. You're, are you showing somebody um, from Generation X right now? Yeah. And they say it's because no... Ricky Gervais got to be over 50 years old at this point. Protecting minorities. They, they, they call him a boomer. Uh, uh, cancel the boomers. Get rid of... That's how the, all this shit, uh, how everything got fucked. It's millennials. They, If it's not millennials, then, who, then who's this um, boogeyman? Then it's a fictional boogeyman. No, it, we can really understand that millennials were offended by the Dick Van Dyke show. And this is what they did. They're basically saying minorities haven't got a sense of humor, which I personally find a strange attitude. It's sort of saying that I think you're below me. And in lots of communities and culture, comedy is meant to be an equalizer. It brings everyone together so that we can all laugh at ourselves and laugh at each other. So many of the comedies that were very popular in the 2000s and 2010s just couldn't be made now. So if you're worried about offending people and constantly thinking of that, you are not going to be very creative. So I think I know that, that, that's why I make my videos the way I do. But everybody hates me for it because they're conditioned to be the communist disastrous effect if this was still the 90s or the early 2000s i would be the popular one on youtube and everybody would hate ethan klein uh, all these pewdiepies nobody would give them the time of day but um we live in the millennial new world where everything was trashed so it could all be given to pewdiepie everybody can be excluded pewdiepie takes the money that's supposed to go to thousands of people and PewDiePie, PewDiePie becomes the new dictator over everybody that nobody elected. But the millennials elected PewDiePie to be the ruler. And the millennials elected Ethan Klein to be the ruler above everybody. This strain of thought really has dug deep into comedy. Some of the most iconic people of the 2000s and 2010s comedy era have definitely succumbed to this. If you take an example of Judd Apatow... We, we, we should go look at um, Ethan Klein's channel that made him famous. And it's all about destroying Generation X and Baby Boomers so that everything can be given to Millennials. The genius of... Them. Why? so that millennials can destroy the world and turn it into communism of these comedies and he has now completely changed his whole attitude on everything he went from edgy comedies edgy jokes using the word gay as a slur and stuff like that to now condemning comedians for making jokes that talk about trans people or gay people etc and then in what seemed like an act of penance for his previous sins he made an entire rom-com about a gay couple with a full lgbt cast to be bisexual awareness week and no one has acknowledged it Let please guys don't cancel so we we only got like two minutes left in this video we've only got like two minutes left and it's going to be just like the other video they have no ex explanation they're all look at how millennial videos end they don't even care to give you an ending in anything <laughs> millennials it's zero it's zero quality and 100 percent communism then they want to then they want to wonder what happened to freedom as though the, we're blaming the, the censorship of China somehow destroyed the freedom of the United States? Uh, I don't think that that's what happened. Sorry for saying gay. You're a white suburban kid who's... The, this, this, is millen this is the work of millennials. You're not allowed to say gay anymore, and you're not allowed to say the word retard. I, I don't think it's Generation X that made these rules. See, Generation X says the word retard, 
And Generation X says the word gay. It's millennials that came in and said, ooh, the Dick Van Dyke show. Ooh, you know those innuendos on the Dick Van Dyke show? I think that children can't understand them. And I, you're lying to children. We need to, to turn, get rid of all innuendos and make everything equal for adults and children. We'll get rid of minors. That, that's, that's like really the fucking plan here. Cost to be bisexual awareness week and no one has acknowledged it. Let Please guys don't cancel me. I'm sorry for saying gay. You're all white. Yeah, anytime you speak, you should be um, terrified that a millennial is going to cancel you because that's who cancels everybody. Bourbon kid who's co-opting black culture. And then also you have Sasha Baron Cohen. He was known for just being edgy and really quite offensive. And so he too kissed the ring by basically took part in public self-flagging where he cancelled himself. You know what, right? Before anyone else does it, I am officially cancelling myself. And so with all of this, it leaves us in a really weird spot. And that is modern comedy films. They are kind of shit. Now, let, let's see. Let's see if it's right. The Dick Van Dyke Show. They couldn't, ha let's see, is it supposed to be equal? And that's what ruins it. It's supposed to be equally for children and adults. And we got rid of children and children. They get to make their own decisions because now children are considered adults. You know, Let, let's see. Let's see how funny it is. Comedies nowadays. You're like, no, this isn't a fucking comedy. You're not. Where's the jokes? Like, where's the uh, where's the innuendos? Because that's what was the jokes, the innuendos. Where's the Dick Van Dyke show? The bits. It's bad. Yeah. Comedy's gotten kind of bad, huh? Yeah. The, the bits. You know, where, where's the bits that have the innuendos in them? Because it's the innuendos that make them funny. Fucking comedy. You're not. Where's the jokes? Like, where's the bits? It's bad. Yeah. Comedy's it's, gotten kind of bad, huh? Yeah, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Movie comedy. With the lack of them being made, the ones that are made, they just always have this this thing of like having to make some. They always have this thing where a millennial's trying to make everything fair and get rid of minors. It always has this dreary communist shit, and all of humanity is removed from it are made they just always have this this thing of like having to make some obvious political message this comment is what we call a planet killer i say we sit tight and assess how are these men looking at yeah every fucking buddy's supposed to be a protester that's also the millennials everybody's supposed to be a protester and political your whole life's supposed to be identity politics, Jim Crow, and protesting. The new world is everybody's a protester. They're also staring at me. Michael Dennis, I brought the girl for you. Comedies these days just can't make non-political jokes. They can't just be funny for the sake of being funny. And so that leaves us with the future. Will comedy return? Is it completely dead? Supr Freedom is dead. So comedy is dead. When freedom returns, well, see, freedom returns when we put all of you people in concentration camps and kill you. Until then, you just keep running the world into the ground as you blame everybody else for it. You take no responsibility. You recognize absolutely none. And the only way to reverse this, the only way to stop it, put all of you millennials in a concentration camp, starve you to death in them then we can make good movies then we can have freedom once we round all of you up and kill you for the, your crimes against humanity where you uh, communism is always the same it's always these people thinking that they're improving things there's always these people that i'm so offended by the dick van dyke show i have another way of doing things and it's always the same throughout all history their way of doing things is always communism uh, and i'm not doing communism no i'm helping things i'm a millennial i'm a perfect millennial building a perfect communist utopia as i don't know what communism is and i think communism doesn't exist but it's my belief system and what I interject into the world and my story as a millennial as I deny communism even exists. I, nobody could understand the characteristics of communism. Nobody could ever know what it is or what it does to culture. 
No, no, it's just my millennial new world full of perfect people. See, there's a problem with your millennial new world full of perfect people. The world only operates again once we put all your perfect people in a concentration camp and kill them. All, all of your perfect people doing perfect things all the time that are really bringing communism to everything need to be stopped. But there's a problem. You all think that you're good people doing good things. Hmm. Yeah. It's pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, it's just the uh, world's oldest story. It's just the uh, most repeatable thing through all history. Then um, every single time this happens in history, which has happened so many times you can't even count it, the world's a bigger place than you think it is. And history is longer than we think it is. You, you couldn't even count up the amount of times that communism is repeated worldwide for as long. And every single time we say, after this happens, it's always the same. Then we say, we will never forget. We will never forget how we were thought we were being good people, but we were really creating communism. We thought we were creating this great fucking world, but really we created the deaths of everybody. Then they say, we will never forget. And then it just repeats over and over and over again because all these people that think that they're doing good really create the communism. They make everybody suffer through all their good intentions. And they think they're good people making the world a good place. And they're really responsible for millions and millions of deaths. These people are responsible for all Holocaust that have ever been. These people are literally responsible for Joseph Stalin. They're responsible for for Mao and they have no idea it's them. They think that it's somebody else. They think they're making the world a better place. It's exactly how Joseph Stalin thought he was making the world a better place. Exactly the plan of Mao is these people. I'm I'm a millennial. I I should be able to control all of reality with my opinions. I shouldn't have to know science. I as a millennial, I shouldn't actually have any education or anything or know anything. As a millennial, I'm entitled with my opinion. That's how Joseph Stalin thought. That's how Mao thought. That's how that's the conditioning of the millennial brain that's really the conditioning for communism thinking that you don't have to know anything thinking that you don't have to have any education that you already know everything with your random opinions that's how the communism is created and the freedom is destroyed so um let's 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 wrap it up with a big nothing burger from the goyim who can't explain anything and don't know anything at all and it sounds really fucking dumb when the goyim try to talk about any fucking thing stop i do have my opinion i think people do oh just look he just said it he just said it for me opinion he has his opinion guys he thinks that his opinion overrides truth with the future Will comedy return? Is it completely dead? Surprisingly, I don't know the answer to that, but I do have my opinion. Oh, he has his, he doesn't know, but he has an opinion. That's the millennial model, uh, motto. I don't know shit. I never have, but I have an opinion, guys. People do just... Crazy. Like, mo millennials are so deranged with this shit, they think that they overwrite a doctor. You know, somebody that's gone to school and, and really knows what they're fucking doing. Millennials think that they override everybody. Uh, no, I don't have to have expertise in things. I have an opinion on it. But they always will. You look through history, we've been through wars, etc. No time was too politically and culturally sensitive to have humor. Comedy hasn't disappeared, it's just moved into different avenues. Stand-up, podcasts, also skip. <laughs> He, he, he's telling us that comedy, so this is a weird thing. This is gaslighting that's happening to us. So comedy doesn't exist. There is none of the movies. There is nobody on the internet. Nobody's allowed to do comedy because you get canceled. So he's trying to tell us that comedy just moved into other areas. Okay, so then where is it? You need to show me because it's not that Theo guy. It, it, where is it? I haven't seen comedy in, in more than seven fucking years. Comedy hasn't disappeared, it's just moved into Oh, I'm being I'm being told that comedy hasn't disappeared, but movies haven't, no comedy has been done in the last seven years. Isn't that weird, the gaslighting that's being done to me? It should be illegal when people gaslight like this. No time was too politically and culturally sensitive to have humor. Comedy hasn't disappeared, it's just moved into different avenues. Stand-up, podcasts, also sketch comedy creators on TikTok. You have people like Trevor Wallace, Jack Joseph, Drewski, and many more. The way I see it is... 
What? In this new wave of comedy podcasts, things like the uh, Joe none Rogan of that movie. is none of that's considered comedy. None of that's funny. None of it's actually considered comedy. Comedy didn't move into another place. Millennials destroyed freedom and brought us communism. Person, your mama's house. The, these podcasts that have now become hubs for comedians. There'll be this competitor to Hollywood, which will be these comedy podcast studios self-funding and releasing films. It's already started happening. And I think that the cultural sensitivity around cancel culture is coming back a bit and people are starting to loosen up. So it oh, good. I'm glad that you have a, a, an opinion on things millennial, but no actual facts or truth on anything at all. You know, I don't think it's ever going to return. Oh, oh, you think? Oh, oh, there, here's more things that the uh, millennial, the entitled piece of shit, deranged fucking retard millennial that's not allowed to say the word retarded. Culture is coming back a bit and people are starting to loosen up. So in my opinion, I don't... Uh, the, the only thing that a millennial ever brought the world is telling us all that we're bad people if we said the word retarded. Around which which also creates communism. I work with retarded children, so I call them retarded because that's the word that we have. Um, they want to take away the way that we know retarded children from normal children. That it's the the same thing that how they want to get rid of minors. It's the same thing communism always does. It's how they kill all the retarded people. They want to pretend that retarded doesn't exist. They want to pretend that retarded is some dirty word. It's, a, it's describing the condition of human beings that are retarded. So I, that work with retarded children, they would all cancel me. So then who's going to work with the retarded children anymore? See, see how they do this? They cancel every the, all the doctors. They cancel everybody that helps retarded children, claiming that when you said retarded, it's offensive. But then there's nobody to take care of the retarded children anymore. They cancel all the doctors. Then they don't do anything. That was it. That's the millennial shit. They, they leave the the retarded children with no doctors because it was so offensive when those doctors said that the chart the children are retarded because they are that's the name that we use to show that children are retarded or people are retarded so yeah welcome to the the to the millennial new world where we kill all retarded children because it was offensive to know that people are retarded it was offensive to say the words so much love to everybody. Let, oh, we have, still haven't finished. We still haven't finished. Coming back a bit and people are starting to loosen up. So in my opinion, I don't... Oh, 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 more... Oh, and you're... Okay, more things in your opinion. Oh, you're, you're a millennial entitlement. Ever going to return to the dominance that it used to be. But I think it will just become this indie thing that some films will pop off. And that's good. It's good to change. It's good for things to evolve. There is a problem... I, I know. We, we should all wake up and realize the problem is millennials, then round them up in concentration camps and kill all of them. Then you'll witness freedom returning. Once all millennials are dead, you'll notice freedom. Being too reminiscent of the past. Like, I love the 2000s and the 90s. But comedy has to change. You can't just remake that style. Hopefully all the... Uh, the millennial who only parodies things, who's never done anything original in his life, says that things need to evolve and you can't just keep on doing the same template over and over again. The person that's never had a template and just makes parodies off of these things. Just will fall. Disgusting. It's just, it's just, it's just, there's no redeeming fucking factor of a millennial at all. There's show me where what redeems a millennial? Nothing, absolutely nothing. To try new things, take more risks, much like the daring, boundary pushing joke I delivered at the very start of this video. I'd be very interested. So you that was your big nothing burger video where you make a man's living a another fucking stupid idiot YouTuber piece of shit. The problem is the monetization of the internet. The problem is these entitled, non-talent millennials, these scumbags that make nothing, that are worth nothing. So much love to everybody. Something that is worth something is donating to the Mystery School, who actually gives you real information, who at, where we do real things, like how we used to do in Generation X. So if you're learning for real at the Mystery School, Please donate to the Cash App, the Venmo, the PayPal. Please subscribe to the Patreon. Much love to everybody. I hope you had fun with this extremely long video.